أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أهل الكتاب قد جاءكم رسولنا يبين لكم على فترة من الرسل أن تقولوا ما جاءنا من بشير ولا نذير فقد جاءكم بشير ونذير والله على كل شيء قدير O people of the book O Jews and Christians Our messenger has come to you Ala fatrati min al-rusul. After a pause, after an interval in the messengerhood, for 600 long years, there was no messenger of Allah, no prophet present on earth. It is fatra. Awwalul fatra. And after Muhammad, total fatra. This institution of Prophethood coming to an end in the person of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So this was a preamble, a preface to the finishing of and completion of the institution of Nabuwa. Ya al kitab, taja kum rasuluna yubayyun lakum ada fatrat min al rasul. He is making clear to, to, to you things after a gap, after an interval of the messengers. An taqulu ma jana min bashirin. Next you should say. To us, there came no Bashir, no bearer of glad tidings, wala nazir, and no warner. Faqad jaakum bashirum wa nazir. Now, a bearer of the glad tidings and a warner has come to you. Wallahu ala kulli shayin qadir. And Allah is powerful, all powerful. He has power to do anything. Wa isqa qala Musa li qawmihi. Now there is a very important incident of the history of Bani Israel. You know, after the exodus, Hazrat Musa wasalam, took all the twelve tribes and they say, it is written in the book of Exodus, in Bible, in the Old Testament, that they were 600,000 in number. Now they traveled in the Sinai Peninsula towards the southern tip and there Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them Torah, called Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu wa salam to Tur and gave him the Torah. Now from there they now went upwards to the north, southward, eastward and upward. And when they reached the border of Palestine, Sinai Peninsula bordering Palestine, now they were commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enter Palestine and fight the people who were occupying that land. When this commandment for fighting in the way of Allah came, they all refused. We can't go to fight. This is a very important incident of their history. And due to that, they were punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they will have to roam in this desert, Sinai desert, for 40 long years. After the completion of those 40 years, when the whole of the generation which was born and raised in slavery in Egypt, they had all been finished. Along with Hazrat Musa and Hazrat Haru, all died. A new generation which was born in the desert, which was used to the hardships, they were tough in their characters. Then they made jihad and qital under the leadership of the first caliph of Hazrat Moses and his Joshua, Yosha ibn Nun. So that is the incident. What I feel is that these ayat must have been revealed before the battle of Badr. 
because there was a mention by one of the companions of the Prophet about this saying, this incident, in the consultation which the Prophet had before the Battle of Badr. Hazrat Miqdad ibn al-Aswad referred to this incident that, oh, Messenger of Allah, we are not, not like the companions of Moses who said, Fazabanta wa rabbuka faqatila inna hauna qaidun. We are the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You just decide whatever you like. And maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you pleased with us. Our attitude would not be that of the Jews who were accompanying Hazrat Musa. Wa iskala Musa li qawmihi and just remember and recall when Musa, when Moses said to his nation, Ya qawm iskuru ni'mat Allahi alaykum. Oh my nation. Remember the blessings of Allah upon you. Is Jaala Bhikum Ambiya. When he raised from amongst you prophets. Before Hazrat Musa, Hazrat Yusuf was also a prophet. He was also from Bani Israel. He was the son of Jacob. And he made you kings. And he has given you what he has not given to any other nation of the world. Now this can be a prophecy also, that potentially Allah has given you. There will be big kings from amongst you. David is to come and Solomon is to come. It can be a prophecy. And maybe he is referring to the days when you know Hazrat Yaqub with his whole tribe, he entered Egypt in the time when, you know, Hazrat Yusuf was occupying a very high position over there. They were very much honored by the kings at that time. The kings at that time were not his cause. They were not the pharaohs. They were the Hyksos kings. They were also alien from the Arabian desert who had come over there and captured Egypt in that, in that era. So they honored and respected these people who were coming from the same source. And they gave them big land holdings. So a big feudal lord is also a sort of a king, small king. So maybe he is referring to that condition and maybe he is saying it as a, as a prophecy that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you already potentially that there will be a, so many prophets among you and there will be big kings among you. And Allah has given you what he has not given to anybody else. And that is certainly, and that is Torah. This book and Sharia was not given to any other nation before Hazrat Moses alayhi salatu wa salam. Ya qawmit khulul ardal muqaddasa. Oh my nation, now enter this holy land, Palestine, enter it. Allati katab Allahu lakum, which Allah has already assigned to you. Allah has promised. Promised land, land of our promise. They call it even today, the promised land. And that actually it was promised to them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has assigned that to you. وَلَا تَرْتَدُّ عَلَىٰ عَذْبَارِكُمْ فَتَنْ قَلِبُوا خَاسَرِ Don't go back on your or your backs, you know. Don't go. Don't return. Don't reply in the negative. We are not going to fight and enter this, this land. Fatan qalibu khasreen. Then you will become, you know, the losers in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qala ya Musa, inna fiha qawman jabbareen. They said, O oh, Moses, in this land are dwelling a nation very tyrant, very strong, big warriors. وَإِنَّا لَنْ نَدْخُلَهَا بَدًا حَتَّى يَخْرُجُوا مِنْهَا إِنَّا لَنْ نَدْخُلَهَا حَتَّى يَخْرُجُوا مِنْهَا We are not going to enter there till they go out of it. فَيَخْرُجُوا مِنْهَا فَإِنَّا لَاخِلُونَ If they go out of it, if they vacate the land for us, then we shall enter. قَالَ رَجُلَانِ مِنَ النَّذِيرَ يَخَافُونَ أَنَعْمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمَا Two persons who had the fear of Allah in their hearts and whom Allah had blessed. They were Joshua ibn Nun and Khalid ibn Yafanna, two companions of Hazrat Musa They stood up. Oh, our people, take the courage. Just you enter. Enter this land. If you show this much courage, you enter the land. You will be. You will overpower them. You will be victorious. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised you this land. So actually only the testing is 
to, to show courage. That's the only thing that is required out of you. Wallah fatawakalu, and you should place all your faith and all your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Kuntu Muminin if you are really Mumin. Palu Ya Musa, they said it in the most decisive tone. Inna Lanad Khulaha Abadan Bada Mufi. We are never going to enter this land so long as they are there. Fazhab anta wa rabbuka. So go you and your Lord. Fakatila and make war upon them. Inna ha huna qaidun. We are sitting here. We are not going to make a move. Jami jumbad na jumbad gul Muhammad. We are sitting here. Now let me say something which you may call apology for the Bani Israel. Why did they say so? It is an apology from them. Why? Due to recurring miracles, they were used to it. If your, your Asa, you know, could make a way in the ocean or in the sea, why can't you go, go with this Asa? Drive them out. That is why there was no miracle with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You have to work for it. You have to suffer for it. You have to take each step yourself. You have to go hungry. You might have to go thirsty. You will be persecuted. Allah will not hold back the hands of Abu Jahl or anybody else from persecuting you. So that you are not given to miracles. Work your way. That is very important. They had the miracles after miracles. They needed water and one striking of this staff of Moses on the rock and twelve, you know, springs gushing out. So they were used to it. They were given to it. They wanted a miracle. But I only wanted to make it clear. But that is why in the seerah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you will find no miracle of that type. The miracle is this Quran. It is the mojza of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was stoned. But no angels came and prevented. Why did so? فَذَبَنْتَ وَرَبَّكَ فَقَاتِ لَا إِنَّهَا هُنَا قَعَدٌ قَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي لَا أَمْلِكُ إِلَّا نَفْسِ بَاقِي Moses said, Oh my Lord, I don't have any authority except on my own self and my brother Harun. فَفْرُقْ بَيْنَ نَا وَبَيْنَ الْخَوْمِ الْفَاسِقِينَ So now please separate us from these people who are transgressors. قَالَ فَإِنَّهَا مُحَرَّمَةٌ عَلَيْهِمْ it is not written here, but it is implied that the request of Moses was not granted. You have to remain with them. And he remained with them till the last. While he was so much annoyed by the attitude of his people that he wanted to go off from them, leave them. Safruq bain and Abba bain al-Qamil Fasiti. No. Remain with them. But we will punish them. And what is the punishment? فَإِنَّهَا مُحَرَّمَةٌ عَلَيْهِمْ أَرْبَعِينَ سَنَةٌ Now this holy land, which we had already promised to them, it is forbidden for them for 40 long years. يَتِيهُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ They will have to wander in this land, in this Sinai Peninsula, in this desert. And as I told you, during these 40 years, the whole generation which was raised in, in slavery, and you know this, gives a special mentality to the people. We can experience it of ourselves. We remained under the Britishers for 200 years or 100 years. So our mentalities were changed. Courage gone. We became defeatist in our mentality. Apologetic in our attitudes. Same was the condition of the Bani Israel. Due to a long period of slavery, their courage was crushed. 
تو دیٹ واز ناؤ وے نیو جنریشن اسپرینگ فطرت کے مقاصد کی کرتا ہے نگہ بانی یا بندہ سہرائی یا مرد کوہستانی ان دی سہرائی دی ڈیزرٹ نیو جنریشن اسپرنگ اینڈ دیٹ جنریشن میڈ دی جہاد فی سبیل اللہ وطنو علیہ نبا ابن آدم بالحق ناؤ بیکاز یو نو killing slaughtering people murdering people as we had noted one of the biggest crimes the basis of human society is respect for human life except when you know somebody has killed anybody else then he will be killed in you know kisas or there are three other forms also but by and large the human life is very sacred now for this you know for the sanctity of human life allah subhanahu wa taala is narrating the incident which happened very early in human history two sons of adam what to allah him about the adam bil haq narrate to them o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the story of two sons of adam habil and qabil habil and cain is qarba qurbanan both of them offered a sacrifice to allah subhanahu wa taala fa tuqbila min ahadin ahadihima from one it was accepted by allah subhanahu wa taala wa lam yutaqabbal min al akhar and it was not accepted from the other now what was the sign that it has been accepted in those are the days those were the days of miracles a fire descended from heaven and burnt the thing that was presented as a sacrifice for allah if it was accepted by allah subhanahu wa taala qurbanin yaakuluhun nar that is why it was demanded from muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam also as a proof of his truthfulness if he is a messenger of allah you should also show this miracle that was you know the custom of allah subhanahu wa taala in the beginning when you know humanity was in its childhood so they needed something which can be seen and you know some miracles and some absolutely out of the way things to believe something now humanity is mature enough to use the intellect and the biggest guide and light for that intellect we have given you and this is the miracle of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so it was accepted from one and not accepted from the other qara then he said it is qabil whose sacrifice was not accepted he became became jealous and he said laqtulannak i will kill you qala inna ma yataqabbalu allah min almuttaqin Habil said, "Oh, Allah accepts it from only the God-fearing people, people who have taqwa, who love Allah. You should look deep down to your heart. Why Allah has rejected your sacrifice? You should try to mend your ways. Why be angry with me? Lain basotta ilayya yada kale taqtulani. If you outstretch your hand, your arm to kill me." man abe basati yadi ya ilayka li aqtuluk i am not going to extend my hand to kill you inni akhafu allah rabbal alamin i have the fear of allah subhanahu wa taala i can't kill you killing a man is forbidden haram inni uridu an tamuwa bi ismi i want that if you are not you know going back on what you are saying if you will kill me what will it result you will have my sins also upon you so i want to punish you i want to give you the biggest punishment and what is that inni uridu an tamuwa bi ismi wa ismik if you kill me you will take upon yourself my sins also in addition to your own sins whosoever is killed you know if he was innocent all his sins are burdened over the killer so he loses the thing he had to die anyhow not if today tomorrow not tomorrow day after that is to come but if somebody takes upon himself all your sins you are not the loser inni uridu an tabuwa bi ismi wa ismik fa takuna min ashab an-nar and then you will become among the people of the fire wa zalika jazaa az-zalimin and this is the reward and recompense for the evil doers and for the transgressors fatawwat lahu nafsuhu qatla khi his baser self 
his animal self prompted him to kill his brother. Now there will always, you know, a conflict within you. Should I do it? No, 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 don't do it. It is haram. Something within you says, don't do it. But something again within you says, oh, go ahead. Why don't you kill him? This conflict between evil and good goes on in between and within the inner inner personality of your own. So that is to which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring. His baser self, his nafs ammara, in the nafs al-ammara bisu, it prompted him to take that courage and kill the brother. فَتَوَّعَبْ لَهُ نَفْسَهُ قَتْلَ أَخِيهِ فَقَتَ لَهُ And he killed him. فَأَصْبَحَ مِنَ الْخَاسْرِينَ And then he became repenting. He became, you know, became losers. And he said, فَبَعَصَ اللَّهُ غَرَابًا يَبْحَسُ فِي الْأَرْضِ Allah sent, you know, a crow who was scratching the earth. Maybe there is some, you know, in background, maybe some crow had died, and then the crow comes and scratches the earth so that there is a pit to bury the body of that crow. Maybe all this thing was shown to Tabil by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through crow. فَبَعَصَ اللَّهُ غُرَابًا يَبَحْسُ فِي الْأَرْضِ لِيُرِيَهُ كَيْفَ يُوَارِي سَوَتَاخِي To show him how to hide the dead corpse, the dead body of his brother. Because it was very early days of human history and culture. Now we didn't know what to do with him. I've killed my brother. What to do with the dead body? Let it rot here in the open, in the sun. What to do? But Allah sent a crow. He scratched the, the earth. And he had the guidance from that, that I can, you know, bury my, the dead body of my brother. And then he said, woe to me, I was not able to be equal to this crow even. So that I could myself think how to cover the body, dead body of my brother. And now he became regretful, remorseful. مِنْ أَجْلِ ذَلِكْ كَتَبْنَا عَلَى بَنِ إِسْرَائِيلِ For that reason we had declared upon Bani Israel what he declared أَنَّهُ مَنْ قَتَلَ نَفْسًا بِغَيْرِ نَفْسٍ If a person kills another person except in revenge for a murder If somebody has killed somebody, well he can be killed in revenge as a punishment But if he has not done that, not committed that crime or fasad in Finland, or if somebody is doing mischief in the in the land, he has raised a rebellion. Now he is committing, you know, decoities, mischief. For these people, for these reasons, for these crimes, somebody can be hanged, somebody can be killed. But if without these two reasons, begare nafsin or fasad in Finland. If somebody kills another human being, it is as if he has killed the whole of humanity. Because he is cutting at the roots of human society. That is the very basic foundation of the human society. Respect for each other's life. How can you live together if you don't respect each other's life? How, you can, how can you live together if you don't respect each other's right of property? These two things are basic for human culture and society, social order. So the, you are cutting the root. So as if you have murdered the whole of humanity. Woman ahyaha, and whosoever saves one human life, it is like saving the whole of humanity. And our messengers came to them with clear teachings. Bayinat. Bayin is something which is self-evident. This word is used for miracles also. This word is used for ayatul Quran also, ayatul Bayinat. And the teachings of the deen of Allah, which are very open and which are very clear to the soul of human beings. But even after them, many of them in the land, they are treacherous. They exceed the limits of the Sharia. 
ان نما جزا الزین ناؤ دس از دی رول فار دی مسلم ناؤ دیٹ واز اے اسٹوری وچ واز ریلیٹڈ آف ابیل اینڈ کین ابیل اینڈ قابیل ناؤ ود دس بیک گراؤنڈ وٹ از دی کمانڈمنٹ ناؤ ان نما جزا الزین یحاربون اللہ و رسوله verily the recompense of those who go to war against allah and his messenger and you know after the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam islamic state takes the place of allah and his rasul whosoever is rebellious against islamic state in the times of rasul messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam going war against the messenger of allah inna ladina yuharibun allah wa rasulahu But now, after his death, it's the Islamic State. If a real Islamic State is present, established, whosoever stands as a rebel against it, who wages war against it, inna ma jazaul ladina yuharibun Allah wa Rasulahu, wa yasraul fi lardi fasadan, and they want to make mischief in the land, the recompense is only an yuqattalu. They should be murdered, killed, and taqtil means they they should be butchered. تقتیل نوٹ اونلی قتل یقتلو نہیں یقتلو دے شوڈ بی بچرڈ او یسلبو اور دے شوڈ بی کروسیفائیڈ او تقطع ایدیہم و ارجلہم من خلاف اور دیئر ہینڈز اور فیر شوڈ بی کٹ فرام اپوزٹ سائیڈز او یونفارم ان الارض اور دے شوڈ بی ایکسائلڈ فرام دی لینڈ ٹرنڈ آؤٹ فرام دیٹ لینڈ ذالک لہم خزی فی الدنیا and this is going to be for them a dishonor in this world and degradation in this world wa lahum fil akhirati azabun azim and in the hereafter there will be for them a very big punishment illa allazina tabu min qabl an taqdiru alayhim except those who repent and mend their ways before you overpower them now just look to it there is an islamic state some people have stood up in rebellion challenging the state waging war against the state now before the state is able to overpower them if they repent if they make tauba and if they amend their ways then they will not be killed but if the state has overpowered them and then they say we make a tauba and we apologize no the time of tauba gone that is the thing given illa alladhina tabu min qabl an taqdiru alayhi except those who repent and mend their ways before you overpower them falamu anna allah ghafurur rahim so you should know that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also forgiving them forgive them because they have on their own repented and mended their ways allah is merciful ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqul la wa taqul ilayhi al wasila وَجَاهِدُوا فِي سَبِيلِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Oh, you who believe, have taqwa of Allah. From taqwa ilayhi al-wasilah. And seek the ways and means of becoming nearer and nearer to Him. If you are really mu'min, if you love Allah, you must gradually. This is called suluk, to go. Sair ilallah, you are approaching Allah, not with your feet, with your heart, with your heart and mind, you are becoming nearer and nearer and nearer to Allah. Ya yo la dina manu, taqulla wa taqul ilahi wasila. Means of becoming nearer and nearer to Allah, and what are these means? This vow now. It is the vow of tafsir, vow of explanation. What jahidu fi sabilehi la Allah kum tufleho, and strive hard in His way. The striving hard in the way of Allah is the wasila. The harder you strive in the path of Allah, the nearer you come to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Ya yola di namanu taqulla wa taqul ilahi wasila ta jahidu fi sabilehi la Allah kum tufleho, so that you may be. successful and prosperous in the ladina kafaru law anna lahum ma fi al-ard jamia verily those who disbelieve and reject the faith law anna lahum ma fi al-ard jamia had with them be 
had they got with them all the wealth of the whole of the world. وَمِشْلَهُ مَعَهُ And more with it, twofold of the whole of the wealth of the earth. لَيَفْتَدُوا بِهِ To ransom themselves from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala مِنْ عَذَابِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ From the punishment on the day of judgment. مَا تُقُبِّلَ مِنْهُمْ It will not be accepted from them. وَلَهُمْ عَذَابُ الْعَلِيمُ and for them is a very big and painful torment. Yuriduna yakhruju min al-nar. They will keep on trying to get out of the fire. Wa maahum bi kharijida minha. And they will not be able to get out of it. Wa lahum azabu muqeem. And for them will be the punishment which is lasting, persisting, permanent. Muqeem. Wa sariqu wa sariqatu. Now the second thing, as I told you, respect. For human life. The other thing is respect for property. You shouldn't steal. You can have a bargain. You can have trading. You earn from each other. You can work for somebody, somebody and you can get the wages from him. Everything. Okay. But to steal, that is wrong. Vassareku vassarekatu. And a thief, whether he is a male or a female, فَقْتَوْ وَيَدِيَهُمَا Chop off the hands of both. This is the punishment. جَزَامْ بِمَا كَسَبَا It's the recompense for what they have earned. نَكَالَمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ It's an exemplary punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah wants to eradicate theft from this society. And definitely, these, you know, punishments of Islam, they are exemplary. They are very stern, no doubt. But we accept, yes, they are correct. Without that, you know, this theft and murdering, it cannot be rooted out from the society. What is happening to the West? Despite all the education, all the means of, of persuasion, all these communication, media, everything is there. Still, most heinous crime, it is prospering here. Why? Because the punishments are not stunned. You can have the example of some of the Muslim countries. For example, used to be the case in Saudi Arabia, no theft whatsoever. But now because they themselves have become loosened, you know, it's, it's a different case now. But a few, few years earlier, about 10, 15 years earlier, no theft, no trace of any theft. Only during the days of Hajj, because, you know, people came from other countries, especially Yemenis, they committed theft. But no Saudi individual never committed any theft. Al-Imanu Yamaniyun. This is the saying of the Prophet ﷺ. But I, I don't want to tell you the incident, you know. But I think we should go further. Masariqo wa sariqo da faqtahu ediyahuma jalaam bima kasaba nakalam min Allah wa Allah wajizun hakeem. Faman taaba min ba'di zulmihi. Whosoever repents and mends his way after committing this sin, waslaha. He has corrected himself. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَتُوبُ عَلَيْهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ So Allah will also turn towards him with compassion, with mercy, with forgiveness. And he is the forgiving one, and he is the merciful one. So now this is not, you know, if you have committed the theft, you have incurred upon you two things. A punishment here, and a punishment in the hereafter. Toba will be, save you from the punishment of the hereafter, not of this world. If a thief says, thief, you know, says, well, I make Toba. Okay. You must make Toba so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, He saves you from the punishment of the hereafter. But here, this had of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is hududullah, it must be executed. The punishment will be given here. Alam ta'alam anna Allah lahu mulku samawati wal-nards. Don't you know 
that to Allah belong the sovereignty and kingdom of all the heavens and the earth. He will punish whomsoever he pleases and he will forgive whomsoever he pleases. And Allah has authority over everything. Ya ayyuha rasulullah yahzunka alladhina yusari'una fil kufr. Now this word, yusari'una, sari'u, which will come many times now. So you understand the, what is the essence. Sura'a, speediness. If one is, you know, working hard for some end, this is yusari'u, fi, for that cause, for that end, for that purpose, for that goal. Then musara'a, Competition. We compete with each other. I want to go ahead. I want to do more service to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to do more, more service to deen. So this is musara. You are competing with each other as if in a race. So, Alam, Ya Ayyuh Rasulullah, Ya Hasunka. O Messenger of Allah, let not those people grieve you who are striving and moving in all the directions. Fil kufr. They are striving for disbelief against Allah, against the Islamic State, against you, against the Muslim society. And they are two groups. Number one is, from among those who say with their lips and mouths, we believe. And their hearts do not believe. What does it mean? Munafiqun. There were two groups there, you know, who were active against the Islamic State, against Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the second group, from among the Jews. Now there was, you know, so to say, a joint front among them, between them, against this Islamic State, against Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But, oh Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, don't be grieved. Allah will... Tackle them. They will not be able to do any harm to you. And what are the attributes of these people? Some ma'oon alil kazib. They listen very much to whatever is false. Their hearts jump and are attracted towards lies and falsehood. Some ma'oon alil qawmin akhirin. And they listen for on behalf of an another people. Munafiqeen came to the Sittings where the Prophet ﷺ was sitting, you know, meetings of the Prophet. And they were, you know, as fifth columnist, they were hearing what is happening here. What decisions are being taken. And then they went to the Jews, tell them, now today this has been decided. This is going to be done. So they are listening for others. Sabbaauna leqawmin akhirin, akhirin. For other people, lam yatuk, who don't come to you. They are not coming to you, but they are their agents. They are here to listen for them. You have refun al kalima min baadim abadhi, and they change the context of the words after that that being fixed. Ya kuluna in uti tum haza fakhuzuhu, and they say to each other, if you are given this thing, accept it. They used to come to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, taking a dispute, decide this. But they had already decided beforehand that if the Prophet decides this way, accept his judgment. But if he decides the other way, reject it. So that was a conspiracy. Apparently they are coming to the Prophet, Oh Prophet, Oh Messenger of Allah, we have a dispute, please judge between us. Very innocently. But actually it was a conspiracy. They have pre-decided it. If the decision is this, accept it. If not, you save yourself. يَقُولُونَ إِنْ أُوْتِيْتُمْ هَذَا فَخُذُوهُ وَإِنْ لَمْ تُوْتَوْهُ فَعْزَرُوهُ If you are not given that verdict, then you keep away. وَمَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ فِتْنَتَهُ And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is putting in fitna, in temptation, in trial. فَلَنْ تَمْلِكُ لَهُ مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيَا You will not have any authority in favor of him, to save him from the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
For them is disgrace in this world. وَلَهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ And in the hereafter for them there will be a very big punishment. سَمَّعُونَ لِلْكَذِبِ They listen to whatever is false. Very much like the lies. أَكَّالُونَ لِلْسُحْتِ They eat the unlawful. Haram. فَإِنْ جَاوُكَ فَحْكُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ how are you on whom? If they come to you, O Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's up to you. If you decide to judge between them, okay. And if you decide not to judge between them, because you can see through their intentions. If they are sincere, if they want actually to take your judgment, then go ahead. Give the judgment, give the verdict. You have to spend some time to listen to both the parties. Your time is very precious. But if you feel that it is only a conspiracy, they don't really, really or sincerely want a verdict from me, then R is on whom? Then you just turn away from them. Okay, no, I'm not going to take your case. Take it to somebody else. Go to your own rabbis. Go to your own chieftains. R is on whom? Find Thor is on whom? And if you turn away from them, there could be a fear. That they will go, you know, and make it a scandal. Well, look to this person. He says he claims to be a messenger of Allah. And we went to him with a dispute. Please give us a verdict. And he is refusing. What type of a messenger of Allah he is? They could scandalize it. But Allah says, don't worry, O Muhammad Sassim. Don't worry. They will not be able to harm you, Shayyan, even a little. But if you decide to judge, then you judge between them with test, equity, justice. In the law, you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the equitables only who do justice. And how are they making you a judge? Although they have the Torah with them, the book of Allah is there, the Sharia is there. Fiha hukmullah. In that Torah, the judgment of Allah is already with them. Summa yatawallahu namim ba'adazalik. But after that, they are turning away from Torah. Actually, what happened, you know? There was a case of fornication between a Jew man and a Jew woman. And both were married. They knew it, that the punishment according to Torah is stoning to death. Raju. Well, they said, go to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Maybe because they might have known that there is no ayatul rajim in Quran. So maybe we will be saved from there. And we shall say maybe we had the verdict from the court of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So they came there. And they belonged to Khaybar. Came from Khaybar all the way. The Prophet said, what is the punishment in Torah? They said, no, no, we don't know. There is nothing. Khulfatu bi Torah, fatlu. The Prophet said, bring the book. And someone of them was, he put a hand on that ayah to hide it. Then you know, he was asked to remove his hand and the ayah was there. And the Prophet decided, I declare, on the authority of Torah, both of them, because they are married, must be stoned to death. So this is it. They are actually turning their backs to the law of Torah. And they are not the believers. They neither believe in you, nor they believe in Torah. Inna anzal naka. Now this section is very important. Hukum bima anzal Allah. To a community, to a nation, to an ummah, to whom Sharia has been given. If this community is not judging matters according to their Sharia, they are the Kafirs, they are the Fasits, they are the Zalims, they are the Mushriks. A very stern verdict for all of the Muslims of today. You think you are Muslims? You think you are Mormons? And your lands are the courts enforcing the law of Sharia? Are the punishments of 
Quran and Sunnah being given. So who you are then? It's a very stern verdict. Prepare yourself for the shock. Inna anzalna Torah. We sent down Torah. Fiha hudam wa nur. In that book also, there was guidance and light. Yaakumu bihan nabiyyun. With according to the law of Torah, the prophets used to judge. Min al-lazin. Nabiyyun al-lazin aslamu. Because they were themselves Muslims. Every prophet was Muslim. Who was Ibrahim? Muslim. Is qala lahu rabbuhu aslim. Qala aslam to the rabbil alameen. Lil lazina hadu. They used to judge and decide the matters of the Jews. Wal rabbayidniyu wal ahbar. Not only the prophets but also rabbani means people, men who love Allah. Rabb. Allah wale whom we call in Urdu. People who are in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Ahbar, and they are, you know, jurists, fuqaha, they, they were giving the verdicts according to the Torah. They must tohfizu min kitab Allah, because they were entrusted the protection of the book of Allah. Wa kanu alayhi shuhada. And they were the witnesses to that. Fala taqshabun nasa bakshawni. So you, O Jews, don't fear men, fear me. وَلَا تَشْتَرُوا بِآيَاتِ سَمِيًا قَلِيلًا And don't sell my ayat, my laws, my decrees, my sharia against a very small, trivial price. What will you get here? If you are selling a fatwa, a wrong fatwa, you might have had maybe a million dollars, for example. What are those million dollars? Maybe you die tomorrow and the dollars will go to somebody else. A trivial price. But we have sold a wrong fatwa. And whosoever doesn't judge and decide according to what Allah has sent down, verily they are the kafirs. They are the rejecters of the faith. They might claim to be Muslims and Mormons, and they might claim to be very high, having a very high position spiritually. But in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are the kafirs. And we had given them the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we had decided for them, prescribed for them in, the, in, 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 in fiha, in that Torah, anna nafsa bin nafs. Life will be taken for life. Somebody kills, he will be killed. Wal'ayna bil ayn, eye for eye. Wal'alfa bil alf, nose for nose. Wal'uzna bul uzn, ear for ear. If somebody has cut the ear of another person, his ear will also be cut, chopped off. Wal'sinna bil sin, and a tooth for a tooth. Wal'jaruha qisas, and in the same way, there will be equal equality in all the injuries. فَمَنْ تَصَدَّقَ بِهِ فَهُوَ كَفَّارَةٌ لَهُ Whosoever foregoes it in charity, okay, you did it to me, I am not going to do it to you. I forgive you. This will become a kafara, an expiation of his sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive some of his sins because he has forgiven his brother who did something wrong with him but he didn't take the revenge. وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَانْ ذَا اللَّهُ فَأُولَائِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ And whosoever doesn't judge by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down, they are the zalims, they are the evildoers. And the other meaning of this word zalim is they are the mushriks. إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ Shirk, associating someone with Allah is the biggest zulm. You are zalimun, actually this is shirk. You have a law, divine law. You have a human law. You are deciding by human law, not divine law. You are making this human being or this, the, the framers of this law equal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, rather greater than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have rejected the law of Allah and accepted the law of a human being or a nation. 
What is parliament? A representative of human beings. It is making a law. Homosexuality, permissible. Two males, married, okay. Two females, married, okay. They are making it. But who are they? They are human beings. They have framed this law. If you accept this law, instead of the law of Allah, you have made them higher than Allah. It's more than shirk. And in their footsteps, so many Anbiya came between Moses and Hazrat Masih. In their footsteps, we sent Isa ibn Maryam, alayhi salatu wa salam, musaddiqan lima bena yidehi min al-Torah, confirming that which was present before him, min al-Torah, from Torah. Wa atayna awul injil, and in addition we gave him injil. Fihe hudam wa nur. Just like Torah, in injil also, there was guidance as well as nur. As there is light. But Musaddiqan Lima Bana Yadahim in the Torah. Again, the words are repeated. Confirming what was present before him from Torah. Why this repetition? I thought over it today, and my mind says that first recognition is that Torah was the book of Allah. This is first confirmation. And the second confirmation is denoting to the saying of the of Prophet Jesus alayhi salatu was salam, don't think I have come to destroy law. This is tasdeeq. The law of Moses will be applicable to you also. These words are there in the gospel up till now. Go and read the gospel according to Saint Matthew. You find the words. Don't think I have come to destroy law. Saint Paul abrogated law. So actually modern, present Christianity is not Christianity. It is Paulism. He abrogated law. The law of Moses. While Jesus says, and his saying is preserved in the Gospels, even today. Don't think I have come to destroy law. Confirming the law and confirming the book, both. The Torah was Allah's book, one confirmation. And its law is applicable to you also. That is the second confirmation. It was a guidance and admonishment and advice for those who have taqwa. People who believe in Injil, they should judge according to Injil. If Injil says the law of Moses is applicable to you, how can you abrogate? Who is bold to abrogate? Third verdict. And whosoever doesn't judge and decide things according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down, they are the fasiks, they are the rebellious ones. They are challenging the law of Allah, the authority of Allah. Who is a rebel? A rebel is the person who doesn't accept and challenges the, the government. Wanzalna ilayk al-kitab, how beautiful. We gave Torah to Moses, we gave Injil to Jesus. Now, inna wa anzalna ilaykal kitab bil haqq. And now we have sent this book, Al-Qur'an, with the total truth, bil haqq. I told you, not the truth only, the total truth. Musaddiqan lima bayna yadayhi min al-tawra, min al-kitab. And it is also confirming that Injil was Allah's book, Torah was Allah's book. Wa muhaminan alayhi. And it is guardian over that, because the texts of these two books have been corrupted. So, it is, the, it is guarding, guardian, muhaminan, muhaminan alayh. Fakum bainahum bima anullah. So, O Muhammad, you now judge according to what Allah has sent down upon you. Walata tabi ahwaahum. Don't follow their lusts and wishes. Amma jaaka min al-haq. And you go away from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent to you from the total truth. Trying to please them. Following their wishes. For each one of you, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared one shirah, one sharia, the ritual and the law. To Moses, we gave a law. Now, basically that law is the same, but there are amendments. The law of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the sharia of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is different from the law of Moses in many respects. So Allah gave them to, they gave that sharia to Bani Israel and this sharia to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَجْعَلَكُمْ أُمَّةٌ وَاحِدَةً Had Allah wished so, He would have made you all one ummah. He could have sent Quran from the very beginning. He could do it. But it is His hikmah. Because humanity was coming up of age, intellectually progressing, evolving. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, according with the intellectual evolution and social evolution of humanity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was giving, you know, the instructions. So Torah had the interim instructions. Total truth has been revealed now in this book. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests you in what He has given to you, whether you cling to the form or the essence. Form of deen has changed. Essence of deen is the same. The deen of Moses, deen of Isa, deen of Muhammad is the same. شَرَعَ لَكُمْ مِنَ الدِّينِ مَا وَصَّى بِهِ نُوحًا وَالَّذِي أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ وَمَا وَصَّيْنَا بِهِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَمُوسَى وَعِيسَى The deen has been one. But the shara'i are different. Shira'atam wa minhaja are different. Methodology is different. Methodology of Ibrahim was different. Methodology of Yusuf was different. Methodology of Moses was different. Methodology of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is different. But now we have to follow the methodology of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been making these changes to, to test you whether you cling to the form only or you can see to the essence of the thing. And whether you are racist or nationalist or seeker of the truth, because this is my nation, this is the book we believe in, I will cling to it, or you are the seeker after truth. If you are a seeker for the truth, then the, the al-haq, the total truth, is, has now come in the form of Quran. First tabiqul khairat. So, O Muslims, or humanity at large, you should compete with each other as in a race for all the virtuous and righteous things. Ilallahi marjarukum. To Allah is going to be your return. Jamia, all of you. For you nabbeukum bima kuntum fihi takhtalifun. And then Allah will tell you, make it clear for you, in whatever you were differing. All the differences will be settled on that day. Wa anehkum bainahum bima Allah. And Judge, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, between them, according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, وَلَا تَتَّبِعَهُ And don't follow their lusts and wishes. مَعْزَرْهُمْ أَنْ يَفْتِنُوكَ عَمْ بَعْدِ مَعْنِ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكَ And beware of them, lest they should take you away from the path, from that thing, their sharia which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down on you. فَإِنْ تَوَلَّوْا And if they are turning their backs, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّ مَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ وَيُسِيبَهُمْ بِبَعْضِ ذُنُوبِهِمْ Then you should know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to inflict them with some punishment due to their sins. وَإِنَّ كَسِرَ مِنَ النَّاسِ نَفَاسِقُونَ And verily, the majority and many of the people, they are the transgressors. The last ayah in this passage is very grand. أَفَحُكْمَ الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ يَبْغُونَ Do they want to have the judgments of the days of ignorance. Days of ignorance before what he came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is jahiliyyah. What do they want? They don't want, they don't like the judgment of Allah. And I told you, you know, many a Muslims in the British courts during the British Raj in India, they used to stand up in the courts and say, we don't want any verdict according to the law of inheritance of Islam. Muslim declaring it. أَفَحُكْمَ الْجَاهِلِيَةَ يَبْغُونَ Do they want the judgment of jahiliyyah? وَمَنْ لَحَسَنُ مِنَ اللَّهِ حُكْمًا لِقَوْمِ يُوْقِنُونَ Who can be better than Allah in the judgments and in the decisions and in the law for those people who have faith in Him? They know that the best law, the best sharia is the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم الله أكبر الله أكبر The Islamic Organization of North America, Iona is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at tanzeem.us or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.